So I'd now uh, love to ask you for a round of applause to invite our, num uh, um, our number one city council speaker um, <laughs> up to the stage uh, so she can talk about the future of civic engagement. So thank you. Close this thing, or is it gonna go off if I do? I'm not really that tech savvy at all. I don't believe that. <laughs> so okay, so I'm gonna try to. Good morning to everybody. Buenos dias. This has been uh, exciting. Is everybody excited? I know that a lot. A lot of talk has happened here. I will try to be quick with my remarks, but really, it, it is a pleasure to be here with all of you. So I want to thank Better NYC for organizing this conference, and t thanks to Civic Hall, who we've done a lot of great work with and uh, always looking forward to visiting the space here. And so happy Women's Month, History Month to everybody. And I know it's International Data Day, so congratulations on that. I uh, really want to take a moment, and I think it, it's been understood, but personally, you know, my former colleague and our borough president, I want to thank her very much for all the work that she's done. We all know that we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for her because she did sponsor that law and that legislation. And also the commis commissioner, Tantoko, it's the first time we meet, but it's really a pleasure to be here with you as well. So as speaker of the New York City Council, I lead a legislative body that helps shape the lives of everyday New Yorkers. Who here lives in New York City? Okay. And I'm hoping everybody here knows who their city council member is. Who does? If you don't, go to our website, plug in your address, and you will know who your council member is. It's very important. In my time as speaker, I've made it my priority to increase transparency and accessibility to the council's work, something that really had gone uh, unattended to. Since 2014, we've passed seven additional pieces of legislation to strengthen New York's open data law and held three oversight hearings to obtain government and public feedback. We focus on making the data more useful and usable to the public by requiring data dictionaries and shifting how geospatial information is presented. In addition, we have worked to ensure that agencies post data to both the Open Data Portal and their website in a timely manner and expanded the time frame for which those agencies retain data. We've done more. One year ago, we released Council 2.0, a digital roadmap to connect more New Yorkers to the work of the City Council by meeting them where they are active. This, way, this is why we are using SMS to engage people in participatory budgeting. Three months ago, we launched Council Labs, an experimental website where we are testing out new ways of sharing information with diverse communities. We're committed to making more useful information available to the public. This past week, we released data from the Council's district offices. All of us as Council members have district offices. That is where we do the work with our constituents. Um, and so for the first time, we've released data from the Council's district offices to the Open Data Portal, something that had never been done before. And last month, my office held the council's first hackathon right here at Civic Hall. And later today, you'll hear more about this in council labs from members of my digital strategy team who are here and throughout. So we made this kind of openness a priority. We've made it a priority to put information out there, get feedback, evaluate, and incorporate the results into our operations. And so why is this so important? So I don't need to tell you that data makes an impact, right? We all know that. We know that it can help develop policy, it can identify gaps in service delivery and even illuminate issues that no one has considered. But what kind of story does data tell? What kind of story has it told about our city? In addition to leading the council, I represent City Council District 8. My district encompasses El Barrio East Harlem and parts of the South Bronx. I'm often told the numbers speak for themselves and that they tell a story. But do they tell the real story? Do they tell the whole story? In 2013, the last mayoral administration touted the creation of 160,000 new units of affordable housing, including 4,000 in my district. However, many of these units were inaccessible to, the most to, mo to most of the residents in the community and increased, actually increased displacement among the most vulnerable in East Harlem. And we learned the lesson that such data can only be the beginning. So I'm excited here to be here today because the possibilities are endless when there is partnership and commitment. One of my proudest achievements as speaker has been the expansion of participatory budgeting. 
This is a grassroots process where council members allocate at minimum, some of us allocate more, but at minimum $1 million out of their discretionary budget so that the public can propose and vote on projects in their community. It's a movement that has taken root worldwide from Brazil to India to Canada. When the council began participatory budgeting in 2013, we only had four districts that participated. I was one of the first to do so. And believe me, there were a lot of naysayers who felt that council members who have the discretion to decide where the monies were gonna go were not gonna part with their money. Now, thanks to centralizing and support, we have now 28 districts out of 51. So 28 council members, more than half of the council is going through this process, which is an exercise, it is civic engagement. We allow young people, as young as 14, to vote in this process. So when you talk about really having and, and, and underlining what the importance of engagement is, it's critical that we start kind of providing those opportunities as government really early on. And obviously what Gail talked about in terms of the, on the digital front is really important as well. So we go through this process where we allow form, uh, formerly incarcerated who usually cannot vote right until they clear probation or parole. We also allow undocumented. So this is a real engagement process uh, and they take ownership, the people that participate. And it's really a great way of redefining government and how we arrive at outcomes. And then the council in partnership with the Urban Justice Center collected demographic information of those who voted in this process. And just um, a couple of highlights so you can understand how the data tells the story, right? So over 51,000 people voted in the last cycle of participatory budgeting. Nearly 60% of these voters identified as people of color. 63% identified as women. Almost 30% reported an income of or at or below $25,000. And more than 25% were born outside of the United States. So this, when you talk about really touching and, and getting people engaged who are really on the margins or historically have been on the margins and disenfranchised, this process really gets at that. And what we hope to do with that is that it will lead to greater voter participation in the case of those who can and maybe haven't voted and just more involvement in making government more accountable to those that we represent. It's a different kind of democracy and one that can only be achieved by intention and transparency. It is a story of residents of New Yorkers who matter, regardless of their gender, ethnicity, income, or national origin. It is a story of neighborhoods built and sustained by the people who live there. And yes, it is a story of innovation, new ideas, and new solutions generated by the people who will actually use them and who actually need them the most. I know that many of you are here because you care about the same thing, and that's why I'm so honored that I was invited to really share some words with you. This is a room full of people who have dedicated their work to advancing the public good, who are passionate about using their skills, passions, and ingenuity to better the lives of New Yorkers. I'm here to undertake a collective commitment with you all to think about differently about data. And I want us to think critically about how we collect it, critique it, present it, and those of us in government really have that responsibility. So as someone who represents some of the most vulnerable, yet resilient New Yorkers in this city, I want to make data a priority. I want our work to tell a story, one that has rarely been told rightly before. I want our data to move people, organizations, and of course governments to act differently. So I'm proud to be part of this new movement that is working to bring data into the domain of the people, and I thank each and every one of you for the work that you do. Thank you very much.